you're looking for the best laptop for your needs, whether gaming, learning, or creating, you need a laptop with great performance at a great price point. But it seems like every time you're watching videos online or browsing retailers, they always seem to be toting the latest tech at the highest prices, which is why I've been posting videos lately about laptops that might not be the latest, but they are some of the greatest. The laptop I have before me here is one of those bang for bucks I've come across, and it stands on par with some of the best laptops from 2023, but at a much better price. As you can see, whether whether working in Photoshop, After Effects, video editing, or 3D modeling, this laptop is on par with the best of 2023 has to offer. Now you may be surprised to find out that the model I have before me comes with Intel 12th gen. This is the i7-12650H with an RTX 4070 GPU. Now what I love about this combination is you get the performance of the i7-12650H, which does not compromise on performance, but is a great budget saving option while also pairing that up with the RTX 4070, so you get the graphical performance and you get the CPU performance you need combined into one budget-friendly option. Now, I want to thank Intel for sponsoring this video and sending over the MSI Katana. And before you think Intel bought this video and controls what I say, you're completely wrong. I'm gonna show you with real data how this laptop is truly on par with the best from 2023 through real-world tests, benchmarks, and workflows. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do to prove the single core performance and multitasking capabilities of this laptop is hook up to a live stream where I'm gonna be editing video, listening to music, displaying to multiple monitors, and streaming out my PC all at the same time. And you're gonna be able to see firsthand how well this laptop performs under that extreme stress test. So I'm running the stress test here on YouTube. I'm running Premiere Pro 4K playback on loop. I have a YouTube video of jazz music running while I'm also inside of a video call on a video call software that I use to record some of the after hours conversations here on my channel. I have Adobe Illustrator, Adobe InDesign, and Adobe Photoshop open where I'm doing a little bit of art sketching. Terrible stuff, to be honest. And as you can see, my CPU usage is bouncing from around 40 to 55, 60%. Uh, my RAM is definitely almost maxed out. This is an area where RAM is gonna be used up quickly. I definitely recommend going for 32 gigs of RAM. Um, but then you can see my GPU is only at 29% usage. So I'm gonna do something crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and run the spec benchmark to test all the 3D modeling softwares, which is Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya, and PTC Creo, uh, as well as SolidWorks. And I'm gonna see where our GPU usage goes to, because right now the computer is running without any issues. I'm able to be over here sketching around in Photoshop, the Premiere Pro projects playing back really easily, my streaming call, and I'm also streaming my computer to my streaming software onto YouTube all at the same time. Now, just so you know, the streaming software is actually run through a different PC, my recording PC. However, it's having to push all that information out and I have an external monitor connected. So let's go crazy and let's run spec and see what happens. All right. So the GPU usage is now up to 99%, 96%, 98%. CPU usage is at 57% and the memory is at 14%, the RAM is at 14%. GPU is still at 96%. Let's go ahead and check out Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro is still playing back smoothly. Um, I have it set to fourth quality. Let's go bump it up to half quality. Still playing back smoothly, full quality still playing back smoothly. So not seeing any issues there. Let's go over to my video call. The video call still seems clear. You can see it over here. It's clear for the video call. GPU usage is at around 85%. CPU usage is up to about 69 to 70%. So you can see my video call, CPU usage, GPU usage all on screen there. And I mean, we're cruising. I, I, it's definitely pushing the system really hard but it's nothing that the system is not handling like a champ. It's not even delayed when I go to do this sketch inside of Photoshop, so really impressed. What I'm seeing getting taxed the most is the RAM, and so you definitely wanna make an upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM if you're gonna do a lot of multitasking, because the CPU and the GPU are handling it fine, um, especially for how many tasks I'm running at one time, and I'm doing an extreme GPU stress test 
by using this spec software. Now, the reason that Intel 12th gen with the i7-12650H is able to handle that workload, it has a lot to do with ThreadDirector. ThreadDirector helps ensure that performance cores and efficiency cores work in concert together. So while running background tasks, you're using the efficiency cores to run those really easy to run tasks that would actually bog down performance cores if efficiency cores didn't take over. So performance cores can focus on important performance oriented tasks like streaming to YouTube, editing video, editing thumbnails, or even you know running all of these tasks simultaneously. If you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, I'll put links in the description below. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. All right, now that we've explored the multitasking and stress taste capabilities of this laptop, let's check out the build quality and usability and then get into the performance benchmarks to top it all off. Now, first and foremost, this is an all plastic build. It is light, but it is not necessarily thin. Now, the plastic top cover, I like the materials they've chosen to use. It's not that chintzy cheap plastic. You can see around the edge of the laptop where the bottom cover fits into the side panel, no catchy edges. The assembly is done very well on the MSI Katana 15. Now, opening up the laptop, you can see you can do that easily with one hand. It kind of flicks up a little bit there with the stiff hinge. And I'm glad they've chosen to use the same plastic material for the top cover as the keyboard deck. And they also have some nice design aesthetic traced throughout the laptop. Now the screen is a budget friendly panel, so you're not gonna have amazing color accuracy with this laptop. That would probably be my one uh, quote unquote disappointment is I just wish it had a higher quality screen. But for the price, I understand they have to save money somewhere. And for me, I would prefer the performance over the color accurate screen in this situation. Now this laptop does come with a webcam, so here's a quick sample of that so you can see what it looks like. This is the webcam on the MSI Katana 15 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. And here's a quick audio sample of what the speakers sound like in use. Now the keyboard feels very nice under my fingers. Nice soft touch keys, not that cheap chiclety plastic material. I also love the design and the shortcut features they have right on top of the keys. You can see here on the keyboard deck, you can quickly flick on turbo mode and then turn it off once you're done with that heavy multitasking or extreme stress test that you're putting the laptop through. RGB backlit keyboard, numpad on the right side. To my dismay, there's a three fourth shift key. I wish it was a full size shift key, but I do appreciate the large arrow keys but I'm a big full size shift key fanboy. So I wish it was a full size shift key. That's, that's, that's a disappointment for me. Now going ahead and checking out the connectivity on this laptop, along the left side panel, you can see we have our power adapter and two USB type A's as well as a vent. Along the back panel, you can see we have two vents along the back of the chassis. And then on the right side panel, we have a network port, HDMI, USB type C, and a USB type A. So keep in mind, you can actually hook up three monitors to this laptop two through the USB type C with a dongle and one to the HDMI. And those can actually be 4K 60 Hertz display monitors coming out of that USB type C Thunderbolt 4 port. One of the benefits of this laptop is the upgrade path. You can upgrade both RAM sticks in this laptop. Now standard from the factory, this comes with 16 gigs of RAM, two eight gig sticks. So you can go ahead and swap those out with two 16 gig sticks or even two 32 gig sticks to give some really nice RAM ceiling to this laptop. Now there is one M.2 slot inside of the laptop, so you'll only be able to swap out the storage that it comes with. You won't be able to add an extra one. So two RAM slot upgrades and one M.2 slot upgrade for the laptop, really awesome. Without further ado, let's jump into the performance benchmarks. Now first and foremost, taking a look at Geekbench 6, you can see that the single core performance is fantastic. The multi-core performance shows a little bit of waning in the actual Geekbench simulated benchmark, but if you remember back to our real world test with streaming to YouTube, you remember that it was not an issue. So simulated benchmarks really drive me crazy sometimes because they don't really communicate what the actual performance is when using the laptop. Take a look at Cinebench R23, single core and multi-core. You can see much more on par for both the single core and the multi-core. Uh, but let's get into some real world benchmarks where we can see what this laptop is actually capable of. Now taking a look at the Blender Classroom benchmark, a 9 
80. Fantastic score, right on par with the latest 2023 laptops and even above some laptops that are far more expensive than the MSI Katana 15. Taking a look at Autodesk 3DS Max, PTC Creo, Autodesk Maya, and SolidWorks, the first three are knocking it out of the park. Now, SolidWorks is a program that really prefers workstation GPUs. So keep in mind, no matter what laptop you use, if it has an RTX GeForce GPU, it's going to struggle in SolidWorks because that GPU is not certified by SolidWorks to work in their system. It's a little bit of a complicated thing. I've made full videos on it. Go watch those videos. We won't get hung up on the details there. But that's why we're seeing some decreased results inside of SolidWorks. Now, taking a look at Photoshop, a 943, a absolutely fantastic score. You're gonna have no issues inside of Photoshop, especially if you wanna make an upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM with this laptop. You will definitely see even better scores inside of Photoshop and After Effects. But After Effects, again, scoring an 847. Anywhere from the mid 700s to 900s is fantastic. In this one, we're right in the mids of the 800s. So good score, you're gonna have great results inside of After Effects. I recommend upgrading to 32 gigs of RAM if you're gonna be a heavy After Effects user because After Effects choose through RAM. It really is important to have a lot of RAM in your system for After Effects. Now going ahead and looking at DaVinci Resolve, the export time was good, it wasn't great. This would not personally be my my absolute top pick for a DaVinci Resolve video editing laptop just from the export time perspective. The video playback was smooth, didn't have any issues, but the export time was a little bit slower than I, uh, I hoped it would be. But as we shifted into Premiere Pro, we saw great export times. Totally on par for the 4K to 4K nine minute clip exported out of Premiere Pro, two minutes and 46 seconds, fantastic. What was even really, what was even better is when you unplug the laptop, you still had a, an export time of five minutes and 16 seconds on battery power only. That was fantastic. A lot of times laptops, dramatically increase the export time when you unplug them from the charger. And we did not see that circumstance with the MSI Katana. Now looking at playback for Premiere Pro, of course we had zero drop frames for 4K, handles it very well. Only 85 drop frames for 6K B-RAW. Um, and then however, if you're gonna be using red footage, know that you're gonna have quite a bit more drop frames at 2,588. But if you're a B-RAW or a 4K user, man, this handles playback really well. If I were going to be video editing with this laptop, I would lean towards 4K and 6K B-RAW. Those would be my top picks as far as what this laptop can handle really well. The MSI Katana comes with everything you need for a high performance laptop that doesn't break the bank. You have Intel i7 12650H. You have the latest RTX 4070 from NVIDIA. You have 16 gigs of RAM that comes in the system, but you can easily upgrade that to 32 or 64 gigs of RAM. The RGB backlit keyboard is tactile, has nice soft touch keys that have a medium key press and snap back very nicely with a numpad on the right side and great control with different function buttons that help you quickly access different settings within the laptop. It is a light on the go friendly laptop with good plastic build materials and a well assembled laptop. So well done from MSI for not only giving us great performance, but assembling the laptop well. If you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, I'll put links in the description below. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. I wanna thank Intel for sponsoring this video. And of course, click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you on your buying journey. I'll see you in the next one.